our number 10 spot we have Chernobyl ghosts. While you can visit certain parts of Chernobyl today that have been deemed safe, taking a trip may not be for everyone, or perhaps it's too far, or whatever hundred reasons there are for not wanting to visit the site. But with the technology we have now, there's another way you can visit the site, and that is through trusty old Google Maps. Many internet people have walked through the streets of the exclusion zone searching around, seeing what photos Google Maps holds, but with those virtual tours comes something that is absolutely terrifying people and that is the apparent sighting of what is referred to as the ghosts of Chernobyl. Many people have reported seeing shadowy figures and sometimes even faces in the abandoned buildings left in the exclusion zone. And I have to admit, some of the screenshots I've seen are pretty terrifying. Do you believe that these are real ghosts caught on camera, or is it just a legend like many of the other things that we have on today's list? Number 9 Radioactive Toy Set Gilbert U 238 Atomic Energy Lab was the hottest thing to hit toy stores in the 1950s for a hefty price. The toy set cost was $50 because it was actually radioactive. $50 was a steep price to pay back then, meanwhile I can spend that in like a day living here. So fortunately a lot of parents bought more affordable science sets that didn't have radioactive stuff. The toy as a result was discontinued not because it was actually poisonous but because no one could afford it. Some say it was safe for children to use as it was very carefully constructed but you know put it in the hands of like a 9 year old boy. <laughs> Iffy. The Atomic Energy Lab contained a cloud chamber in which you could see alpha particles traveling at 12,000 miles a second. That would be pretty cool. Like, if I was that kid and I didn't know what was going on, I totally would be like, Mom, I want that for Christmas. I would have a blast. Pretty impressive, but definitely something rated for kids like 40 and up with, a, with maybe a science degree and like a lab suit. In our number eight spot today, we have the government cover up. Part 1. Of course a disaster like this is going to get some government conspiracies swirling around and we've got a few of them to talk about today, so let's start off now with the first one. This little ditty suggests that the Chernobyl disaster was actually conducted by the Soviet government due to the failure of a new, at the time, huge missile defense radio structure called Duga 3. This structure, that actually exists in real life, is suspected of having been wildly over budget and it was the source of many, many complaints after it was was built. The systems were extremely powerful and broadcast in short wave radio bands. They would appear without warning and sounded like a sharp repetitive tapping noise and they would disrupt things like legitimate broadcasts, amateur radio, commercial aviation communications and utility transmissions which all led to there being international complaints and at the time people didn't know what this structure was or what the sound was. This led people to think that the signal was actually being used for things such as Soviet mind control or weather control experiments. So this story suggests that in order to eliminate it, the nearby Chernobyl facility was allowed to go into meltdown. It seems like they probably could have done something much less lethal and much less damaging, so I'm not exactly sure how true this one could possibly be, but I do suppose that this is a list of urban legends. In our number 7 spot today we have the Chernobyl Zombies. This little legend can most likely be attributed to a video game that takes place in the exclusion zone but it is certainly not based on any real life facts, at least that we all know of. This little legend claims that after the Chernobyl disaster we of course know that unfortunately people lost their lives, but what happens if those who did then became the undead? Yep, we are obviously talking about zombies here. There are plenty of legends that suggest the exclusion zone isn't dangerous and off limits because of toxic radiation, but actually because there are brain eating zombies wandering the area. I mean, I personally have never received a lethal dose of radiation, so I cannot confirm or deny that this would turn one into a zombie, but I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one out for being fake. I mean, at least I'm really, really, really hoping it is. We've dealt with enough in the last year and a half we really don't need to add radiation zombies onto the list. In our number 6 spot today we have It Never Happened. Okay, this is probably the easiest one to disprove, but perhaps it's not. This legend suggests that the whole disaster never actually happened and that the entire thing is just conspiracy. I don't know why anyone would do that. 
but hey, this is just a legend after all. There would be so many hoops to have to jump through in order to pull off that level of a stunt and keep it up for this long. Like let's be honest, there are too many people involved for all of them to have been able to all keep the secret for this long. There's just no way everyone could keep their mouths shut. And what about the people who passed away from the event? I just have a lot of questions about this one. There are some weird legends on this list, but I do have to say that this one might be the least believable. And we just talked about zombies. Unfortunately, it seems as though the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was a very real thing that happened, and it affected a ton of people. It was certainly an event that changed the world and made us all a lot smarter when it comes to nuclear safety. I hope. In our number five spot today, we have this super secret laboratory. This legend suggests that the Chernobyl disaster was a planned event that took place for a specific reason. You may be wondering what this apparent plan is, and that would be the plan to build a super secret laboratory. I mean, think about it. You want to build a super secret place, just cause the entire place to be so terribly contaminated in radiation that no one will want to search the area. Or those who do might even meet an untimely fate. It certainly is an evil plan, but it could potentially be quite effective. I don't think that this is the case at all, and I don't think Chernobyl was a planned event in order to build a secret lab, but I do agree that whoever originated this legend has quite an imagination. What do you think this lab would contain if this were true? Like an Area 51 type thing? Aliens and mermaids? Or perhaps that's where they're hiding all the three-eyed animals everyone keeps talking about. In our number four spot today, we have the Chernobyl illness. This is one of the more malicious stories on this list, which I do not like at all. People who lived in the region of the disaster had a huge impact on their day-to-day -day lives, and a lot of people had long-lasting health impacts from the entire thing. This disaster has been linked to terrible things like an increase in thyroid cancer as well as other forms of cancer. So when fake stories of a fake disease began circulating around, it was honestly super messed up. One of these fake illnesses coincided with the height of panic, misinformation and ignorance surrounding HIV and thus the totally made up condition of Chernobyl HIV was born. This made up disease was the source of many a whispered warning against friendship or relationships with those who had survived the disaster. Like like these people just survived the worst nuclear accident in history and now they have to worry about harmful schoolyard gossip? Yeah, no thanks. Despite its terrible origins, people still spread rumors and fear mongered and it truly is a cruel, cruel, entirely made up story. In our number 3 spot today we have Government Cover Up Part 2. After the release of the incredible HBO show Chernobyl, which you haven't seen it, it is a must watch. Like it is such a good show. I watched it with Che if you remember that guy and it was just unreal. Anyway, after the show's release, the Russian government released a statement saying that the show was actually anti-Soviet Union propaganda and that they would be releasing their own Chernobyl show which would detail how the CIA was actually the cause for the disaster. Rumor has it that the CIA sabotaged something which caused the reactor to melt down and the whole thing was actually America's fault. I have no way of either proving or disproving this theory or legend, but I think it's probably safe to say that someone here isn't telling the truth. And it's not like it's a new thing that Russia and the US aren't exactly getting along. Maybe it's all just propaganda or maybe there's some truth? I don't know. What do you guys think? In our number two spot today we have the Blackbird. People in the district of the Ukraine that houses Chernobyl have told stories of sightings of the Blackbird for years and it is perhaps the most well known legend that comes from the area. The Blackbird is a human creature with wings and piercing red eyes and it was apparently seen by workers at the Chernobyl plants on the fateful day of the nuclear disaster. After this it was reported that anyone who had seen the bird would later report suffering from terrible nightmares and begin receiving threatening phone calls. Many of the people where the legend originates from unfortunately were at the center of the disaster and have since passed away from radiation poisoning so no one is sure if the blackbird really is out there or not. The blackbird is said to be a symbol of something terrible being afoot so seeing it is 
definitely not a great thing to happen to a person. I think it's probably just another one to add to the list of reasons why maybe a Chernobyl visit isn't the best idea. In our number one spot today, we have alien cleanup. There's always got to be an alien story to keep things interesting and to add to the list of questions we have for extraterrestrials when we hopefully eventually find them, and Chernobyl is no different. Rather than the aliens causing the disaster, which might be where your mind went, instead this legend suggests that they helped in the aftermath. Apparently some people out there think that the Chernobyl disaster wasn't as bad as it should have been. I don't think they mean it in as bad of a way as that sounds, but rather they are just surprised that the amount of people who passed away in the disaster wasn't higher, considering how bad the whole ordeal actually was. This coupled with an apparent eyewitness account from a man named Mikhail Veritsky who claimed he saw a fiery ball of light hovering for a few minutes above the exposed reactor on the night of the incident has led people to speculate that maybe our friendly alien neighbors swooped down in the nick of time to help clean up the mess that was made. Apparently this ball of light was also seen on September 16th. 1989 when there was more radiation leaking from the unit at Chernobyl, which some claim was the aliens containing the radiation. Honestly, I'd like to think that this one is true because what a nice thing for the aliens to do. They probably have their own nuclear weapons, so they certainly didn't need ours, and we didn't really have the tools to clean it up, so I can definitely appreciate the fact that they lended a helping hand. Number 10, ghosts. It was a ghost who did the whole thing. Now everything makes sense. There's no way anything could go wrong in the powerhouse known as the USSR unless there was something supernatural afoot. No, I'm just messing with you. I'm not talking about ghosts pre-explosion, but ghosts after the power plant decided to go kaboom. People say that the site is now haunted by people who lost their lives in the explosion. One scientist who visited the site in 1997 said he could hear someone screaming from inside the reactor room that they were being burned alive. But the reactor room had been sealed shut and there's no way anyone could get in without a fingerprint scan and a password. So that means there could be some radioactive ghosts just chilling around Chernobyl. That kind of sounds how you make like a second tier Batman villain. In our number 9 spot today we have animal mutations. There's no doubt that the Chernobyl nuclear disaster had devastating effects on all of the life in the area surrounding this meltdown. I think that's something most of us can agree on and while most of the human life has moved out of the area, there is a lot of wildlife that remains and those animals have taken over the exclusion zone. While scientists often observe and test these animals, it is clear that they are all contaminated in radiation and thus have mutated in certain ways. But despite the rumors, there are in fact no three headed cows wandering around. I think this might be one of the most popular legends floating around in terms of the Chernobyl disaster. The story that there are just full on monsters living within the exclusion zone. Or that the meltdown happened because of a failed radiation experiment on these animals. There are tons of swirling rumors regarding the animals, but in the end the effects of the radiation is seen much more in things like their ability to reproduce, or them not being fit for consumption, rather than in things like extra limbs and heads and eyes. Number eight. The Soviet Union sacrificed soldiers. So rumor has it that the Russians sent in robots to try and clean up the explosion site, put out fires and contain the reactor. But the radiation was so harsh that all the robots broke down. So they went to the next best thing, soldiers. It said that soldiers were given an ultimatum to date me or I don't want to see you anymore. Wait, I'm thinking about the wrong unstable reactor. No, what the Russian government actually said was spend two minutes shoveling sand onto the exposed reactor or go fight in Afghanistan for two years. Really the worst choice ever. Go fight in an intense war where a bunch of people are dying every day and your chances of coming back in one piece are slim to none or for sure get radiation poisoning. Something interesting about the Russian soldiers who decided to shovel sand onto the exposed reactor, they were called liquidators because they would take shots of vodka before they went in. Vodka was thought to prevent any conditions related to radiation. We we really knew nothing back in the day. Number 7. The land is safe to live on. Radiation is very bad, we all know this. Comic books have lied to us. Radiation does not give you any sort of superpowers. If you want superpowers, you need to be an alien or super rich. 
Those are the only ways. After the Chernobyl disaster, the radiation of the surrounding area was at unlivable levels, or that's at least what the government said. Some people from local villages didn't care, and after everything was said and done, they fought to go back to their homes. They wanted the right to live where they used to live, and they were granted freedom to do so. There are over 100 people living in the exclusion zone, and their life expectancy isn't any shorter than that of the average person. They grow crops, hunt animals, and even drink the water, all of which has recorded high levels of radiation. But no one seems to care or be affected by it. Maybe if someone has a baby born out of there, we'll get our first superhero. Just a little bit of radiation right out of the womb. Maybe that's the trick. Number 6. This could have changed the world. Even though there was an explosion at the Chernobyl plant, it wasn't a massive meltdown. It ruined the surrounding area and the reactor site is still extremely dangerous, but it could have been much worse. If there was a total meltdown, like a Britney Spears 2007 shaving her head level meltdown, running around with Kevin Federline level meltdown, the world would have been a much different place. The nuclear fallout would have made Europe unlivable and millions of people would have died. The Spice Girls would have never existed. It would have been a major bummer on epic proportions. And we can't really know how the whole world would have been affected by this. Maybe it would have only been Europe, but maybe it would have been the whole world getting hit by this nuclear fallout. Maybe all of us would have had to been raised in bunkers just like the fallout games, and only resurfaced to find super mutants and three headed dogs running around, and Thriller is still the number one song on the charts. That actually sounds kind of cool. Number 5. Black Bird So the Chernobyl disaster was caused by the mismanaging of the nuclear reactor. Or was it caused by a supernatural being known as the Black Bird? It is said that days leading up to the Chernobyl disaster, people saw a huge black winged creature with glowing red eyes. People believed that it was some sort of demonic entity that came to bring a dark omen to the area. Good news for the Chernobyl scientists, it wasn't their fault at all that the reactor blew. It wasn't because I'm bad at my job, it's just because a mythical beast came to spread dark energy and he did it in the form of a nuclear reactor meltdown. Duh. Some people who were on the site at the time of the explosion said that they saw a dark winged creature flying out of the fire. From now on that's what I'm going to do anytime I screw up royally. I'm going to blame the whole thing on a monster. Did you just rear end me? No. Are you stupid? That was the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. I think you should be a little bit easy on him. When he was alive, cars didn't exist. There were just boxes attached to cars, okay? Number 4. Mutated animals. There's a theory that from the explosion many of the animals who were in the radiation zone were affected by the blast and caused to mutate. There's even the taxidermied body of a deformed piglet on display at the Chernobyl Museum. There hasn't been extensive research on the matter, so it's unsure if any cancer growth or defects that were found on animals were because of the blast or were going to happen anyways. Now enough time has passed and so few humans visit the area that the animal population has actually increased. I would say that the Chernobyl disaster caused the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and that they're actually Russian, but TMNT actually came out two years before the disaster. Happened. I guess the Chernobyl version of TMNT would be middle aged Chernobyl scientist human in great pain. Number 3. The meltdown was a cover up. Take out your makeup wipes girl because we got to uncover some tea. I think that should be my new catchphrase. Well this is some major tea about the Chernobyl disaster. There is a rumor that the whole thing was a cover up for a failed secret experiment known as Project Woodpecker. Project Woodpecker was a giant set of radio towers that were supposed to give the Soviet government the ability to detect nuclear missiles before they were launched. If this thing was to work, it would be huge. They could know where other countries were keeping their warheads and if other countries were lying about having nukes at all. But the project failed, and because the people working on the project were so afraid of what would happen to them if the higher ups found out about the failure, it said that they orchestrated something that would distract everyone from the problem and also destroy the problem. Pretty sneaky plan, but kind of a long shot. Too many things would have to go perfectly right for this to be true, but if if it is true, it's some major tea. Number two, the meltdown was caused by the KGB. Girl, if you thought the last one was hot, I got some scorching tea for you. There have been rumors that the whole Chernobyl meltdown was a plot by the KGB to control Europe. By causing the reactor to explode, it would strike fear into the rest of Europe when it came to building their own nuclear power plants. After the whole world was watching as a reactor melted down and almost destroyed the entire continent, not a single soul would get in line to buy a shiny new power plant. 
Instead, all of Europe would have to rely on Russia for energy since they have a huge amount of natural resources. This would give Russia an insane level of power for the unforeseeable future. This is hot, hot tea. And number one on our list. UFO heroes. Alright it's time to go way off the rocker with these theories. I was able to dig up some reports of people saying they saw UFOs that helped stop the reactor from becoming a major disaster. Mikhail Vartisky was there on the day that the reactor went and he said he saw several glowing objects fly over the broken reactor. He then saw a beam of red light shoot out from the glowing object and then it flew away. People believe that some alien friends came down to have our back in this terrible time of need. There were like humans invented tacos. We must save them. Number 10, Vita Radium Suppositories. Yeah. What I've discovered while making this list is that after radium was discovered, people became obsessed with it. Like the GMA and Frank's Red Hot commercials, they put that on everything. Vita Radium Suppositories were developed as a way of relieving our digestive systems a la radioactive material. According to this ad, these suppositories were guaranteed, guaranteed to contain radium, which is exactly the opposite of what we want to see on the back of canisters today. People believe that radium had miracle effects when it came to the human body, saying that they made you glow because they did. These pills were to be inserted into the rectum so they could be dissolved and devoured by the entire body. According to the ad, and I quote, every tissue, every organ of the body is bombarded by its health giving electric atoms. They also implied that it would increase libido. Oh wow. But the only thing that rose to the expectation was the death toll. Number 9. The CIA did it. After the release of the critically acclaimed HBO series Chernobyl, I really can't stress enough how much you guys need to watch the show. It's so good. It's literally the highest rated show of all time. What more do you want? Anyways, after the TV series came out, the Russian government released a statement that the TV show was anti Soviet Union propaganda and that they were going to make their own TV series telling the real story about how the reactor melted down because the CIA sabotaged it and it was all America's fault. This is some major tea on both sides. They're spilling tea about each other. Will Russia and the USA ever learn to get along? Are we going to have to listen to the two of them complain about each other until the end of time? We should just get these two countries to kiss and get it over with. There has been unbroken sexual tension between these two since Rocky 4. Just start playing nice already, please. Number 8. Perpetual Sunshine and no that's not my nickname but if you want to call me that go for it. Wouldn't it be cool if we all glowed like Alina in Shadow and Bone? Yeah, it definitely would. But like if someone offers you any kind of radioactive substance like run, get out of here. Radithor was yet another cure all remedy said to cure everything under the sun. The deadliest snake oil out there. But I should say we do use radiation today for things like cancer but we know more or less what we're doing with it now. Radithor was a patent medicine that featured distilled water and two isotopes of radium. Perpetual sunshine in a bottle is what advertisers called it. And it was one of many radioactive of elixirs on the market, but sadly, the more a star glows, the faster it burns out. A popular Radiothor advocate in 1932 eventually developed holes in his bones, skull, and his entire jaw had to be removed. Still, the man sadly died due to radiation poisoning, so not the miracle cure people thought it was. Unless you didn't like him, that's dark. <laughs> That's very dark. Okay. Number seven, Thoradia. From cancerous white face powder to radioactive cream, beauty really does kill. I wonder how much of my makeup on my face um, is slowly killing me. Joke, not a joke. I don't know. <sighs> Thoradia was another deadly beauty product introduced by a Parisian beauty company that was all the rage. It boasted having thorium and radium lead to help stabilize and promote blood circulation, tone the facial tissues, eliminate fat and remove wrinkles. Product toured Belgium, Italy, Portugal, Romania, Egypt and of course France. Radium's energy was useful as far as creating a natural luminous appearance, but in 1937 the French government put a massive restriction on the sale of products that contained thorium and radium, forcing them to stop using the ingredients. Like it was almost as if the government was catching on to some not so dewy glow side effects. Beyond cosmetic, the cream was also recommended for scrapes, bruises, herpes, frostbite, you name it. Some clients might not have seen the effects of these chemicals right away, but their later ailments definitely had a relationship to the miracle cure makeup. 
Number six, radioactive shoe sizers. Why use a measuring tape or those like cool metal feet slidey things when you can just use a nuclear bomb? Okay, well not a nuclear bomb, more like a whole bunch of radioactive materials. I'm honestly just as surprised as you are. I had no idea we were this obsessed with radium for this long. The shoe fitting fluoroscope was a revolutionary new device that changed the way people have their feet measured because apparently rulers didn't work. Despite scientists getting severely injured during the creation of the device, shoe stores adored it. Parents would take their growing little boys and girls to the counter to have their feet scientifically sized. They put their feet into the x-ray fluoroscope and the salesman and customer would see the bones in their foot. The customers also got a healthy dose of radiation. What a deal. Fortunately though, by the 1950s, these machines were recognized as dangerous and slowly banned state by state until 1970s, though Europe continued to use them because they're chic. But decades before bans came into question, the dangers of radiation were already public. In the 1920s, x-ray pioneers suffered very gruesome and very public deaths. Actual data didn't appear until the 1940s and nobody listened until the aforementioned date. But hey, at least they knew they were a size 7.56 over a 7.5 shoe. That's helpful. Number five, radioactive toothpaste. Everyone wants to have a smile that lights up a room. Yeah, radioactive toothpaste, a joy for dentists around the world. So we know by now that people freak out at radium for breakfast because they were convinced it could cure everything, even bad yellow teeth. A German company called Our Company wanted to get out of the steadily building war business. So they came out with thorium toothpaste in order to divert their supplies away from the Yahtzee, evil German people. Nuclear initiatives, especially after they knew Germany was going to lose the war. Marketed as the scientific toothpaste, they advertised that the radioactive chemicals would be able to hinder the bacteria in the mouth, which I guess would be technically true, therefore creating healthier teeth. But unfortunately, the opposite was true. Like rotting away. It was awful. Number four, the trico system. Look. I hate waxing too. I hate it. I've tried it twice and to this day I refuse to put myself through that kind of pain for a bikini pic. Like I'm just not gonna do it. It's the worst. I get it. It's a struggle. A struggle. The trico system was eager to solve. And it did. Kind of. The trico system was a hair removal device that became a must have in every hair salon in the 1920s. It would remove hair painlessly. All you had to do was sit at a mahogany desk and face a window. When the flip was switched there was no burning. Just a slight hum from the machine and boom, no unwanted hairs. Except there were some horrendous side effects. Yes, it would remove the hair, but soon women and men would develop cancerous ulcers, carcinoma, and death. The reason they were using x-ray technology, which is, as we know, radioactive. It would be administered to the skin for a few times and would require anywhere from 15 to 20 treatments to be effective. When the trico machine was leased out, however, there was no mention of what the technology they used was and the person administering it wasn't very well qualified either. Right? Clients were just marveled that it worked so well until it slowly burned their face off. So bottom line, if someone says anything is a miracle cure, just uh, maybe like scream at them and run. Number three, the Radium Girls. This story breaks my heart, it's so sad. Uh, the Radium Girls became so radioactive that if you stand on their graves today with a Geiger counter, it will still jump like 80 years later. Small town girls from New Jersey were hired by a local factory to paint clock faces of luminous watches. How did they glow, you ask? Well, with glow in the dark, radioactive paint. They painted 250 dials on average daily, and in order to ensure that their lines were clean, they would lick the end before dipping it into the paint every few times. They were paid in pennies, around 27 cents per watch today. That, that's what it kind of breaks down to. So they worked tirelessly, each day swallowing more and more paint. Slowly but surely, the girls were eaten from the inside, their bones dissolving with each stroke of their brush. In the 1920s, 4,000 workers were hired by the US and Canada. The inventor of the glow-in-the-dark paint himself died of radioactive exposure. The first death of the girls, though, was Molly Magia, died after suffering burning ulcers and agonizing aches, her jawbone dissolved, and so on. The USRC covered it up, saying they weren't responsible, until dozens more died via extreme tumors and horrific other illnesses resulting from the radium. Number two, Marie Curie. Marie Curie was a brilliant scientist, a pioneer in many ways for women in the field. Her primary accomplishment was expanding our knowledge of radioactivity. But they didn't take any of the precautions we now know to take today. In fact, Marie and her husband Pierre were both buried in lead cast 
caskets to contain the radiation they accumulated in their bodies while alive. Even their furniture was radioactive. Marie discovered two new elements, radium as I've mentioned and polonium and was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. Using the new discovery of radium, Curry discovered it could be used as the gamma ray source in x-ray technology, advancing the field. She also invented smaller more portable x-rays that medics could use on the battlefields. However, the Currys overlooked what prolonged exposure to radiation could do. She even used to carry tubes of radium in her pockets. In the 1920s it finally caught up to her. Her health started to deteriorate rapidly and developed a severe form of leukemia. She passed away on July 4th, 1934. Pierre died years earlier in 1906 from an accident in the street. He was run over by a horse drawn cart. Because he was so young though, his body held on to more radioactive materials so his body was actually more radioactive by the end than Marie's was because by that point it would have run through. Interesting, but terrifying. And last but not least, you knew this was coming, the atom bomb. Hands up if you think every world leader should get rid of their nuclear devices. But they won't, sadly, which is a terrifying thought. After all, no one buys a weapon without having a plan to use it. And if you look at the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, well, one of us is going to be next. The bomb at Hiroshima destroyed two thirds of the city's building in a flash of light and killed 60,000 by the end of 1945. Some were killed directly, others years later due to their injuries. Decades later, survivors of the bombings were still pulling debris from beneath their skin, like little shards of glass, as well as enduring horrific medical conditions like cancer, kidney diseases. The list goes on. Three days after Hiroshima, they dropped another on Nagasaki. Today, the cities have found new life and would hardly be recognized after 75 years. However, the memories of what happened remain and how could they forget? Hibakusha is the term used for survivors of both Hiroshima and Nagasaki and many like Hiroshi Harada take action for disarmament and advocate for world peace. Of course they didn't know what we know now, but it sure makes you wonder what we will wish we had known today. <laughs> Definitely for sure. Mm -hmm.